Okay, welcome back to video number two. All right, where we left off is we were talking about the polls. You click on update for polls and you go to the accessories. We have some poll accessories you can click on. One of them is post protector and the other one that I was getting ready to talk about at the end of video one is plastic sleeve. Okay, so one's tan, one's black. So you've got those options there and then you've got another company out there called Permacolum, which has a concrete column uh, with the post, the actual wood post above ground. Okay, so if you're going to use one of those, you would select perm column and you can include the galvanized acre for the bottom of the wind uplift block and include uh, perma, uh, concrete perma column. So you can check these two if you're interested in doing those. Okay, now post cleat is just a board that's going to be nailed to the bottom of the post before you drop it in the hole and bury it. It's just a, an uplift block. So you can choose what you want to use, and you can configure these and set up. But right now I've got treated 2x4s or 2x6s. And you can do just cut off a block. I, mean, I think we there's a little formula we use for how wide they are based on the diameter of the hole. You're going to tack a board to each side of the bottom of the post, and then set the post, and then you're going to bury it. Okay? It's called a post cleat or a wind uplift block. All right, so that's all I can say about the post right now. Um, well, there is an advanced tab, so we're going to go over here to advanced, including pole bracing. So if you include pole bracing, that just means that you've got a 2 by 4 16 uh, that's going to be calculated to temporarily hold your post in place until uh, the building's put together. It has no other use. It's a temporary brace. And when you're all said and done, you're going to have some poles, uh, some pole bracing left over. So if you check that, you're going to get one for each intermediate, and you're going to get two for each corner post. Okay? Intermediates just mean all the posts that are not the corners, and they're not door posts. All right? Just know that you'll get one for door posts, too, on the pole bracing. All right, so include overhead plug poles. Now, we'll talk about this in a little bit, but a plug post is nothing more than a post that goes above an opening. All right, so if you've got a 16 by 7 door and you've got a 20 foot tall building, you're going to need posts that go above the header on the door and they will mount to the header and then go up and, and you know, to where all of the others are at that are not on an opening. And then you're going to continue your girt spacing and setting trusses on top of those posts if you're doing a match pole truss style. And that's what a post uh, overhead plug pole is. All right. Now you're going to automatically get those if you're doing a, um, a match pole to truss. But it's really for the people that use truss blocks. And they also want to take a overhead plug pole from the truss carrier all the way down to the header. Okay, so they would check this box in order to get those. If you want to extend your posts, maybe you've got some uh, unlevel terrain and you want to, uh, uh, you know, to make it uh, longer in case you do have unlevel terrain and you, you, you can go in and when you set this to like 12, we'll say, every post is going to be two foot longer. You don't have to put in 24, you can put 12 in. The reason why is lumber is in increments of two so if you're using a standard 14 footer in in, a, in that case when you add 12 to it you're going to get a 16 okay so that's there just for you all right and then adjust first pole spacing by we're not going to talk about that right now don't worry about that we'll deal with that later all right okay now let's go on to the skirt board so we hit update on the skirt board we can choose uh Treat it 2 by 6s 2 by 8s I'm going to use a 2 by 8 just one row. And by the way, you can choose multiple rows if you want. If you're using Easy V or Center Match, you choose this one. Let's just do that. We're going to choose 2 by 6 two rows. Now, notice there's an Advanced tab here. This Advanced tab is taking care of the interior grade settings, which will change the height of the metal. All right, so remember, the benchmark in Maestro is the top of the top skirt board. So if you got two rows of uh, center match from the top of the the the, the, the top uh, center match board, 
That is our benchmark. That's ground zero, so to speak. So everything's being measured from that. So we'll say the finished floor height will be, in this case, we're going to set this to five. That'll be five inches below. So that's going to put it right at the seam of the two by six center match. So our floor is going to be poured to the seam on the inside. The finished earth grade, well, I want both center mats to show. So I'm going to set this at 10. So all this means is when you're on the outside of the building, you're walking up and it's the finished earth grade. What are you going to see for uh, square boards? In this case, you're going to see two of them. All right. And then the siding begin point is where do we want to put our rack guard? Where's our where's the beginning of our siding going to be? Now, notice we're not saying to the top of the rack guard, bottom of the rack guard. It's the split of the rack guard. It's wherever your rack guard, base guard or whatever you call it, where it's going to be placed for the bottom of the metal. That's the number we're looking for. And it's gonna get adjusted by Maestro. So this is only an approximate number because we round all of our metal to the next inch, okay? So let's say we wanna start, I'm gonna set it at four. I always go one inch less than where you want it to be. So set it at four, because it's gonna get rounded down anyways. So we hit update on that, okay? Walgert's hit update. I'm going to use construction grade two by fours, two foot on center. I can bookshelf those or lay them flat on the outside of the building. You have an advanced tab for how you want to uh, uh, see them on your Walgert layout and whether you want them to stagger or not stagger or let Maestro figure out to stagger, which is optional. And then we've got use even Walgert spacing. If you check that box and you go back to this, this is no longer static. It means that uh, the spacing is now a maximum of 24. So what if somebody said, hey, I want 30 inch spacing. Well, notice 30 is not there. Just type it in, 30 tab. There you go, okay? So however you want it, you can type it in this case, all right? And if you use even Walgert spacing, then that just means a maximum of 24 or a maximum of 30 or whatever okay now diagonal bracing that's for the corners of the building it's just bracing uh, to run uh, on the corners so I'll show you a picture of it here uh, the bracing is um, it's a good one to look at we're gonna do a slideshow on this one okay the bracing that you see here is called truss seat or bottom cord laterals this is knee bracing, by the way, that's a temporary knee brace. And that was a match pole to truss style building. I'll put pause on this. All right, this is showing the nested purlins. That's the, and, and the, the reason we're showing you this one is the bottom one's a brace. That's that truss seat or bottom cord lateral. But instead of laying flat on the bottom cord, it's nested in this case, okay? And uh, this type of brace that you see here is nothing more than a wall girt that is being put into the truss itself. So if the truss company does this on the end wall trusses, well, of course, there's more labor involved, so it's going to be a more expensive truss. And we have an option that you'll see in there for this type of truss. Okay, this brace here is called a Y brace. We're going to see where that goes here in a little bit in Maestro. Another Y brace. Another Y brace. And you can see these up here, they're called web restraints. Another Y brace. And there's your temporary pole bracing that we were talking about a little bit ago. Okay. And there's another uh, brace. There's a, now that's a knee brace that is permanent. Okay. And that's a match pole to truss style building. Now where we were at in Maestro is the diagonal bracing. I just wanted to show you a picture of that brace but we went through the other braces so we killed two birds with one stone all right now there's another brace that we're going to talk about here in a little bit that's just another brace diagonal another y brace and right there it's this one it's a wind brace and it goes diagonally from the top of the truss and it should go right to about here but they they moved it back a little bit but it's just a diagonal brace that goes to the bottom of the next truss in this case which is a a nine foot on center building, match pole to truss in this case. There's just another view of it there. Okay. All right. Let's go back to our estimate. And when we get in here, that's 
the checkbox to use that diagonal bracing. We do not draw it. We just calculate it on the material list. All right. This checkbox is to not alternately shade the building components on the wall grip view. Light, dark. When we see it, you'll see it's light, dark, light, dark, light, dark. It amplifies where the seams are at. Uh, I like it. But for some customers, they don't like it. And when that happens, they can just check this box and it won't draw them light, dark. It'll just draw them all the same. Okay. Now, because we did a match pull to truss style building, we got Walgreens all the way up. There is no such thing as a truss carrier. So you're going to see this change. If you choose the other method we talked about in polls, it'll say truss carrier. But because we did match pull to truss, now it's just called top girt. It's the very top girt. So in this case, we're going to run in there. We're going to click on this girt. And we see she's getting slow again. So I'm going to have to end the video too and we'll start over all right but right here you'll see it's the top girt i get to choose between the uh exterior on e1 we'll go into two by six and the exterior on e2 will also be a two by six and the knee brace no no thanks but this is where you would choose the knee brace right here and you just hit okay all right so this concludes video two and then we'll continue on with the wall material layers in video three